Trisha with the Bohemian Butterfly. We are gonna paint this dresser with DIY paint. Uh, it's a clay-based paint. The color is Apothecary, and this dresser has a marble top. We're gonna to go right over that with the, the DIY paint. I've already washed it. I am gonna take off the hardware, and we are going to, at the end, we're gonna apply an IOD transfer, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. DIY paint is a clay-based paint. It's highly pigmented. In most cases, you only need one coat. However, for this project, I did do two coats. As you can see, DIY paint dries fairly quickly. It also dries a lighter shade than the original color. Not to worry, once you seal the project, it goes back to its original color. I went right over the top of the marble with the DIY paint and it adhered beautifully. I allowed the first coat to dry for 24 hours and then I applied a second coat. You can see I've, I've done this drawer, right? Um, and how I'm gonna, gonna continue to do that and stick that back in there <clears throat> with a water bottle and a rag. So, um, just making sure there's no more comments. Okay, so you don't wanna spray the furniture. You want to spray the rag. So what I'm doing is I'm just spraying my Mr. Bottle, just getting this, this damp. And uh, let's see, I wonder if you guys are close enough. That's the other thing. Let's see, I can maybe move this just a little bit closer so you can get, you can get a better view. Um, a little wet distressing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll start with the hardware in the store. And one of the things that I want to always do is keep um, this as real as possible. You know, um... okay, so here's the drawer. So I've got my, my rag with just my finger in there and the DIY paint is a clay-based paint. And so it reactivates with water. see where's that at okay there it is can you see that just do a little bit more i'm just doing a very light 
distressing on this piece. So basically I'm just pulling away the paint. It's just one of the reasons why I love um, this. I love this paint. Now, one of the things that you wanna make sure that you don't do is distress in areas where it just, you can see the paint coming off. See that paint coming off there? Okay. Um, you don't wanna do is you do not want to distress it like just everywhere and make it look like a leopard. You want this to be distressed in areas where it would naturally distress, like right in through here, where you know fingers, oil would have touched um, over over time. Okay, so this is my first time using the IOD transfers with the DIY paint and I'm going to show you how I'm going to apply it to this dresser. So I'm using, what is this? This is vintage linen and I'm going to pour a little bit onto the plate. Oops, I keep calling this a transfer and in fact it is a stamp. thin the paint out just a little bit and I've got the transfer right here it's these words um, they're all written in um, I think French because I can't read them but I'm gonna apply it to the dresser so I have my brayer and I have my brush and my paint so I'm gonna take the brush and apply the paint to the brayer like this. Again, this is my first time ever doing this. I don't, we're doing it together. I don't know if um, I'm doing it correctly or not. So we'll learn together. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna take the stamp and I'm going to go ahead and apply the paint onto those words. They um, probably be a lot easier and you have to do it quickly because the DIY paint dries so fast. I'm gonna lay it down on the ground and finish that up. Let's see if I can um, bring, bring you guys down here. Okay, so I'm applying to all of these words just like that with the brayer and I got this brayer at um, I think Michael's Hobby Lobby I'm not sure okay so here's our dresser and <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to touch the words and this is not a flat surface so I'm just gonna go right into this little crevice Press down and 
And there you have it. It's a hot mess. I'm gonna have to paint over that because I moved it. And as I moved it, um, the, the letters got all smeared. So we're gonna do this again. Take two. All right, so let's try this again. And I haven't painted over it. I'm, I may paint over this whole entire side. I'm practicing now to see where I went wrong. And I'm gonna teach you that. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm not gonna go inside that inlet again and see if I can. The key is to not move this thing. So I moved it. difficult because of the way yeah. Come on, there again. so there's definitely a learning curve here um, let me bring you guys in I, you know I guess I can't do that uh, it is it looks horrible it looks like smeary and not good, not good at all. So the beautiful thing about the DIY paint is this, is that it's, it, it should rub off with water. So I'm gonna try to do that and see what happens. If not, I'm gonna paint back over this and then I'm gonna figure this thing out. And it may be just that it's this, this insets a little bit right here and um, it's, I'm not able to get a, to get it flat, so that might be the problem. But we'll work on it together. Okay, so after that epic fail with the um, stamp, I have taken the last 24 hours to do a little bit of research and a little bit of studying on the IOD stamps. So one of the things that I didn't do was I didn't condition the stamp. So one of the uh, how you condition the IOD stamps is once you take off um, the, the plastic um, protection uh, on it, any of the stamps, you want to take a little bit of sandpaper and lightly sand over it. Um, and so I've gone and done that and I've done a little bit of practice piece, uh, a little bit of practicing on a piece and also talked to some other artists about using the IOD stamp and their experience with it. So one of the things that you can do is use ink or you can use paint. Ink gives it a crisper look and paint, you have to put on a thin coat, do it quickly and not press too hard. So there's a little bit of a learning curve and um, it can tend to bleed a little bit, but it does give it that aged look. Um, one of the other things that one of my fellow artists talked about is um, sanding it after it's after it dries and I did that on my practice piece and I actually really really like it so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot on the dresser this time I'm gonna do it um, on this this section right here so let's go ahead and get started and see how that how that goes all right so I've got um, vintage linen on a paper plate and I'm going to use the brayer to um, load up the paint. You guys can see that. Okay. Now the key is, is to not have to get just a thin layer of paint. So I think this has got a lot of paint on it. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to try to offload some of this paint onto the dish. Alright, now we've got our side here. Try to turn the camera so you guys can see a little bit. Okay. 
Now, I went ahead and I, I did a little practice without any paint on it to see right where these words are going to, to end. And so it's right about here. So I don't want to put paint below that spot right there. So I'm going to keep my finger there so I know exactly where I'm going to load this. So just a very thin coat is what we want to do. That's what everyone was telling me. Very, very thin. making sure that each one of the letters um, has paint on it. And one of the things that you want to do is you just want to make sure that you commit. And so here we go. I'm going to commit. I'm going to get this out of the way. And I'm probably in your van, in your view. It's right there. Lay it down. And the key is to not press too hard. And so I, I brought out my um, cutting board and I just laying that on there and just gonna give it a pat because that kind of gives it an even um, weight. And right there. And then you want to lift it up straight up. You don't want to shift. Okay, so I hope I can get this close so you guys can see how it just has a, a script with a very, it's very hard to see. Um, I probably could have pressed a little bit more but it does have a very faded look like um, an old, you know, script letter, letter on there. So um, it's definitely better than it was um, on, my, on the first go around where it was just a big blob and it was moving all around. So I just want it to have that faded look. Okay, next step. So, I don't know if you can see um, the script. Uh, I did it along the center, did some along the drawers, along the sides, and I'm getting ready to apply the transfer. So, with these transfers, you can go ahead and, comes in a tube, comes in a tube like this, and you're able to cut them and customize them or you could put it up just as is. However, uh, looking, I think you have to decide and look at each piece individually and decide if um, that's gonna work. I've decided that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this and I'm going to apply um, flower here, flower here, wording, and I'm gonna apply some wording up and through here because of these keyholes. Um, and this drawer, um, these drawers kind of sink in a little bit and they go over the, there's a little bump right here. Although I'm still going to apply that uh, flower and it's gonna go right over those little cracks and crevices. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part and then um, I'll slow it down when we get to actually applying it. Okay, so I went ahead and I cut out the, um, 
the transfer and I have strategically placed um, each piece where I want it to go. I've still left the white backing on the transfer because once you remove that, there's like a sticky, a very, very um, light sticky backing on here. So um, I'm gonna leave the backing on each piece until I'm ready to apply. And uh, one of the things that I didn't mention was um, I'm using just a painter's tape to kind of hold this in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing. It just kind of fell off, which is kind of cool. Uh, and let me just get right. You know, the great thing is it has grid lines on it, so it can help you to um, get it lined up and centered, and um, you know, line it up with with edges to get a, a centered look without having to measure. I went ahead and used this O as my center point with the, um, the lock to keep it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start in the center and move my way out. Let's start with the O simply going to when you when you start doing this you can start to see it coming away a little bit it starts to uh, the black uh, almost kind of starts to look gray and then you can see air between the, uh, the transfer in this plastic piece that it's on this whole uh, piece together, this whole transfer together, but I didn't want to completely cover up the script writing from the stamp that I had applied. And that's the beautiful thing about art. You are the artist. And you can do whatever you want and you can cut these. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. So it does um, take some time and definitely some patience. Uh, and right over in this area, right here, um, some of the transfer flipped on itself and that can happen too. So um, just wanna be mindful of that, but it just adds to the character, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna continue to do this. Once all of the transfers were in place, I applied a thin coat of DIY's Big Top over the entire piece. Once that dried, I lightly sanded it and then went over it with the DIY Clear Wax and lightly buffed it after it dried overnight. 